Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Starry Mug, especially it's the Halloween month, and I just got done playing two games. The first one was Resident Evil 2, great way to start out, especially the remake is about to be coming out soon, and I, wow, it was just great talking about the franchise, the game, the remake, and everything. And then the other game I played recently too, was another sequel of my favorite franchise, Silent Hill 2. And I got to talk about why I like to, the the ups and downs about it, and the, my, why I love the franchise, and everything. And before we start playing the third game of Halloween, let me tell you that I am doing a free giveaway of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard for the PS2. And all you have to do to win this game is like and comment on the previous videos, and I will put them in the descriptions down below from the last two videos. And on that, on this video too, like I say, you just have to like and comment on each video to get your more chances to get a free game, but also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And let's play, but here's a little, here's a little bit different about this game. It is going to be on the Dreamcast, and I'm going to play with this. So, let's get to it. Well, here it is, the House of the Dead 2, and man, this is one of my favorite games on on the franchise too from Sega, and it's a really fun game, and I like the Dreamcast port because it's exactly the arcade port. You can never go wrong. The only difference is I'm using a a third party brand controller, but it works good for a third party brand controller. I would love to have the official Sega controller for it. But, it does the job, it's really good, and I'm going to start the game now. And I should apologize again that it's going to make a lot of noise, because it's the Dreamcast. <laughs> so, oh, and on top of that, I'm going to play with my headphones, because to get a better sound of the game. We're meeting G over there. What? And the cool thing about the franchise uh, I like about this gun because you can reload with your thumb Well the House of the Dead franchise is pretty funny because it's just a B rated movie the first game was just you going through the actual mansion, kind of like Resident Evil, but you're just shooting all these man-made monsters. And it's a simple arcade game. It's a simple light shoot arcade game. But this game has a lot of twists and turns in the game franchise. If you save certain people and... Uh, there goes that alternate route. There was nothing we could do. And here's the cool thing about this game. If you have more than... If you have two players playing, it's really fun, exciting. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to pause. I'm sorry, it's very hard to talk and play this game at the same time. You gotta be really active. You gotta be real. There's no breathing room at all in this game. At all.
Okay, so the franchise is pretty cool. You, you play in, a, you, in the first game, you are in the mansion, and you're going through the house, and there's alternate routes. And the cool thing about this game is if you play one player by itself on the left side, you get one ending. If you play player two by himself on his side, you get another ending. If you have both of them, both players playing at the same time, you know, side by side, you get the real ending. And this is throughout the franchise. And the cool thing about this game, it's it's very action-packed, it's exciting, and... And not every monster is a zombie, not every monster is mag-made, like, like very specific mag-made. It's like, it's like they got, they were like watching a lot of pre-rated zombie movies and horror movies, and they just made their own game around it. And I know there's a movie out there, but it's not really good. Ugh. And I played throughout the whole franchise. I played one, two, three, and four, all in the arcades. But there was one that came to consoles, and it was really crazy. It actually got the Guinness World Record for the most F-bombs dropped. I just like the cheesy bad acting in these games because this is how you know this was like early 2000s and it's very fun exciting energetic and here's the cool thing about this game there was a spin-off game on PC and Dreamcast and it's called typing of the dead and the cool thing about that game is you don't use a light gun you use a keyboard and you learn how to type and that's really fun that's really fun in the franchise and the game is straightforward you just shoot and you just shoot and everything and it's not that hard it's really fun it's really exciting it's action-packed so it's not really much to talk about it's just in the story is not even that complicated it's like it's like best way to describe this for this game it's basically a super simplified version a super fine simplified version of Resident Evil that's what it is it's very dumbed down Resident Evil but good and I like it I really love it I love I love going to like arcade places and see if they have a House of the Dead machine. And each enemy is unique too. Like, like these guys, they just wear armor and you have to shoot them in the heart. And the camera angle actually follows the one that's about to get you the most. And I'm not really good at this version. See, the camera angle. I didn't hit the key. If I shot the key, I could have went through the other path. Look how the camera angle follows the one that's about to get you. The... See? For me, this was a great arcade shooter. Shoot em up. Well, not really shoot em up, but like a great shooter because it follows the angle.
and they have some weird monsters like leeches, frogs, uh, crazy, crazy jumper dudes. Dudes with chainsaws, one or two sometimes. There we go. time you just end up running with zombies. Oh, I can't save her in time. Some some of them give you like bonus points uh, bonuses, some give you health bonuses. Like I said, crazy enemies. I shot him in the heart. It's a really fun franchise. I love it. And I want to see how far I can get before I die. And you got some cool characters. Like, they're not really impact. And some of the bosses they tell you how to defeat them off the bat, but the but there's like the final boss when they don't tell you anything. You gotta figure it out. But it's obvious if it's anything that's red and glowing, just shoot it. You actually get to fight this monster in a different area. Right here, you find him in the in the lake. In this area, you're fighting him in the lake. But you could actually fight them in the bridge if you if you end up picking up the key. And I kind of want to fight them in the bridge because these piranhas are like too much. him fighting here actually he's stuck on a pattern because if you fought him in the bridge he'll go left right and middle and it's randomized in the bridge but I got him in the lake in the lake he could only go forward but he was throwing piranhas in this part of the level don't care who it is no one's gonna get away with this life bonus because I didn't save any hostage if you save five or more you get a life bonus but like I said some hostages give you health some hostages give you uh, items it's been a while hasn't it my friend from the AMF it's me Goldman that great acting that's all I have to say like I said this is like a simplified Resident Evil but later on in the series it gets a little weird like three the, f the factory's destroyed, but they're still running around in the factory because that's what's left over. And some got mutated over the years. Four makes no sense at all. You're in the subway, and you're playing as one of the old characters from the first game, and one of the new characters. Oh. Are you alright, James? Yeah, I'm hanging on. He doesn't say that. If, if you got hit, if you got, if you didn't get hit, he'll never say that. He'll just say. See? Different path. Different path. If you, 
if I didn't save him, we would have been going through the sewers. This game's very addicting when you own a when you own the home port of these games. When you own the home port of these games, they get very addicting way too fast. It's like you don't really want to get out of to the arcades and play for real. Because the Dreamcast and the PlayStation no not the PlayStation. I wanna say the Xbox version of three and four were were better because they were exact arcade books. You didn't have to kill them, you just have to get rid of the battles. But the one I liked that they made for the home port, it was for the Wii, and then they brought it over for the later consoles, is House of the Dead Overkill. Because with that one, they straight up made a B-rated movie. Like a B-rated movie from the 70s to the 90s. And it has a lot of swearing, it has a lot of cussing and all that, like a B-rated movie. It does not... It does not follow the the, the original arc from one through four. It doesn't follow that. And Overkill it's its own thing, and it's really cool. Oh, here comes a boss fight. Oh, I hate this boss because you have to shoot all the heads. And but this gun, I'm not sure if I can do that. You have to go after the one that's charging up too. And but the camera angles do help. Like I said, it zooms in at the one that's about to attack you. So that really helps your aiming. And this is where I'm going to end it. Because I don't want to spoil the game too much. So this is where I'm going to end the game. And... And that was House of the Dead too. On the Dreamcast. It's a really fun, action-packed arcade game. Hey, you can use the controller, but I recommend using a gun of sorts. Because it's really fun. It's the exact arcade port with some extra features. Everything set. It's just a All really over the top light gun shooter game with B rated acting and B rated what storytelling. Like I said, if you want Resident oh, Evil but simplified, this is it. And I, I could talk I could talk about this game for a long time. I could tell you the other franchises, but I'm just gonna let you know that the ones you should recommend playing are this one. Two is the best one. Because it's more fun, it's action packed, it's, the color scheme is a little grim but bright. Two, Overkill, and of course the very first one. Those three are the best ones to play. Don't get me wrong, three and four were okay, and there's a new one coming out too soon. That one I cannot wait to play. The new one, oh my god, that's going to be looking great. Especially they're going to use a bigger arcade cabinet and everything. I just saw how what they're going to do. So, before I go, I have to mention this again, because I want to, and I really want to give this game out for free. Like, comment on this video, and the previous two videos, and the video that's coming next. 
to get your chances on a free copy of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And make sure you subscribe to page 2 to enter. So, this is this is another episode of the Halloween special of, of, of Story Mode. And I'm glad you, you guys stayed tuned. So, have a great day. And I'm going to keep playing a bit. Thank <laughs> you.